Hey everyone, it's Nick Valenti with NJ Valenti Art, and in today's video I'm going to show you how to draw this one-eyed monster in Affinity Designer on the iPad. Alright, so getting right to it, I am in the Pixel Persona in Affinity Designer. I've selected a basic pencil brush. I'm just laying in the overall shape of my little monster here. I'm working on his eyeball here. Um, got just this one giant eye in the middle of his body here. I think it adds his goofy factor a little bit. I'm going to add some eye bags as well. And here I'm just going to center him up a little bit. So I've gone into the alignment options panel over here and I'm just centering him top to bottom and left and right. Now here I'm uh, switching over to the design persona where I'm going to start the actual vectoring process. I've grabbed the pen tool and I'm simply using a stroked line here. I'm going to outline the basic shape of uh, this little monster. And you can see there, in order to control the individual handles of each node, if you put two fingers down on the iPad while you're moving that, that handle, it'll help you shrink the handle back and get a better curve. Here I'm going to go ahead and just reset the pressure on my line. I want a pretty even weight line all around. I'm not really worried about either end being tapered at this point. Continuing just to use a stroke. And now for his mouth here, I do want the one side of his mouth to taper a bit. So I've come into the pressure panel. And I've manipulated the one node on the far left in order to get me a more uh, thin and tapered line for the one side of his mouth there. And I'll do the same for this little um, notch I'm working on here. I'll kind of taper both ends a little bit there. I've selected a basic circle shape for his eyeball. That'll be the overall shape of his eye. Here I'm going to build his eyelid shape on top of the uh, circle we have for his actual eyeball. And here I'm going to start filling in some uh, colors. So I'm going to take the eyelid shape that I have here and select this red. I, I want the color of this monster to be a base red color and then I'm going to add some lighter orange and yellow um, highlights and then have maybe a, a deeper purple shadows. So right now I've set a color for the eyelid and now I'm making sure that the shapes I'm building for the um, people in the eyeball itself are underneath the eyelid layer. And I'm coming in here and just selecting off some flat base colors for now for each of the shapes and I'll come back and add some gradients in a little bit to help make those pop a little bit more before getting to the uh, actual lighting effects that we'll be using. I noticed at this point in illustration that the um, black lines I had were more of a dark gray so I'm just kind of coming in here now and cleaning that up a little bit and selecting all of my outlines and lines that I have and making sure that they are a nice solid black. Continuing to build up my shapes and I'm thinking in layers here. Um, so the specular highlight for his eye is going to sit on top of the rest of the eyeball layers there. Um, and it'll still sit underneath the eyelid in my layers palette as well. Um, so it's always good to try to stay as organized as possible and working on um, illustrations in Affinity Designer or any program really for that matter. And it just helps, um, you know, you go back and you have to make any changes if necessary. Here for his eye bags, I'm placing that shape again behind our eyeball shape.
for him coming with the pen tool again and I'm going to um, outline the entire shape of his body underneath the line art layer that way I can add that red to his body and we will work from there Here I'm going to simply switch the stroke to the fill color there and I'm going to drag that underneath all of my other layers so that'll be our very base bottom layer, the red color of his body. Now here I'm coming in and I'm going to select each of the shapes again and I'm going to add a basic gradient to those shapes. And this will right off the bat give some more dimension to the shape that we already have. And here I've come in here as well and I've set the gradient to a radial gradient considering that the eyelid and the eyeball itself are very rounded shapes. So I want to use the radial gradient here and give me more of that spherical um, look. Again, we're going to do the same for his body. We're going to give it a base gradient going from this orange that's closest to the light to that deeper, darker red furthest away from the light. And again, this is just the basic uh, gradient for the base color. And then that way we're going to come back and we're going to build on top of this gradient to add even more depth here in just a few minutes. I'm also keeping in mind my light sources since I have this stronger yellow light source coming from the upper right of our illustration. Um, when I was doing his eyeball, I wanted to make sure that there was a little yellow light kind of sneaking into the white of his eyeball to kind of indicate that off screen yellow light that we have. And that's what I'm doing here as well is adding more of that orange yellow light to the overall side of his body. Coming in here and selecting a basic shape for our shadows. This will be the first main shadow that we're going to really add. Um, and now this, I'm going to have this under the eyeball and the eye bag layers. And this is going to be sitting on top of the actual body color. So as I select a color for the shadow, since I've got this very warm yellow orangish light off screen is our main light color, that's going to give us a darker, more bluish, purple kind of shadow and that's why I've selected the purple colors here and I'm going to come in here to our layer styles and go to multiply that'll make those colors darker and I'm going to mess around with the gradient of the shadow as well so by adding a gradient the shadow closest to the eyeball itself will be darkest and the shadow will get a little bit lighter as it gets towards the edge of his body where we're going to have that extra um, grim light coming in here in a second so we want to create some depth within our shadows by having a lighter side to the shadow and then a darker side to the shadow as well. I'm going to come in here and do the same thing for his eyelid. I want to create uh, this shadow shape here, leaving just a little sliver of red on the left side, which we're going to come back here in a little bit, like I said, with some uh, rim light to really make this pop and add some extra form and dimension to the piece. I want to bump up our orange light um, on this side of the character here a little bit. So I'm creating a gradient here that goes from a light orange to a darker orange. I've then gone in and taken that darker orange opacity down to zero, so I'm left with just that lighter orange color. And I'm manipulating this ellipse here to cover most of his body and kind of fade into the rest of the orange and red that we have on him a little bit more naturally. Uh, you can always come in and add some Gaussian blur to uh, the gradients as well and that'll help kind of blend them into the figure a little bit more. 
what I've done here is I've created a shape for this blue rim light. And I've after I created the shape, I dragged that shape into the shape of the body, which then created a clipping mask. So the blue is only affecting the actual portion of the body that's visible. Any blue outside of that, it will just show up as nothing. Uh, it's a very effective technique in order to affect just one shape of your illustration without affecting other areas of it as well. After I lay in that blue color, I'm coming in and adding a little bit of Gaussian blur to it, and that is helping blend that color into the rest of his body. That way it looks a little bit more um, flowing and even as opposed to just that harsh line. I'm also coming in and hitting the left side of each form with this blue rim light. I want to keep my light source consistent. So I've got the left side of his body covered in the blue. I'm hitting his eyelid now, and I'll continue to do that with the eyeball and the bags under his eyes as well. On the other side, I'm going to do the same exact thing, but now I'm going to do it with more of a yellow light. Um, this is where the light source is going to be hitting it the most directly. I have clipped the shape inside the body shape again, and I'm just coming in here and along the outside edges on the right side, adding that strong yellow, which I'm then adding a little Gaussian blur to, to again blend it into the overall shape a little bit better. As I go here, you can see me creating the shape and then I'm dragging that shape into the other shape I want it to affect. So after I created the shape uh, for that blue highlight there, I dragged it into the actual eyeball circular shape. That way it would clip to just the edge of the eyeball. I'm doing the same with the yellow highlight on his right side as well. Adding some basic gradients to his eye bags as well. So just going from that nice light purple that we already have there to a slightly darker purple. Um, this is just a, a linear gradient from top to bottom. I just want to give a little indication of that shadow there. And then again, creating my blue highlight shape and clipping it to that specific eye bag shape and using the Gaussian blur to, to blur it out a little bit. And when you have similar shapes close together, you can always copy the previous shape move the new shape to where you want it to be like for in this case here i'm taking that blue and i'm sliding it over to the right side uh, that way i could go ahead and get the yellow highlight without having to create a whole new shape so that's uh, one way to save some time So I wanted to create a, a simple gradient background, but one that is opposite the main colors that we have in the illustration. So the monster is more uh, yellow, orange, and red. So the opposite side of the color will be the blues and purples. And it creates this very nice contrast between our foreground monster and the background itself without having to get too crazy with details. Um, the blue at the top will also kind of indicate some of that additional rim light that we have coming into the left side of the figure there. Creating a little sliver of extra light on the inside of his pupil. Um, the light would technically come in and bounce off of that spot um, on the opposite side of the specular highlight there. So it's a nice little touch to add a little more dimension to the eyeball. Now I'm coming in and I'm strengthening my background lighting sources um, with, again, gradients. So I'm creating a light to dark blue gradient. And then I am taking that dark blue and lowering that opacity down to zero. So I'm left with just the light blue. 
the larger the ellipse, the more area it will cover, and it will give me a chance to really kind of let that light flow softly into the scene without it being too harsh. I'm also going to change the, the layer style a little bit. Uh, I believe I said to screen there, um, and that will make it a little bit more uh, vibrant and stand out a little bit more. Here, I'm just going to duplicate that ellipse that I have for the light blue, and I'm going to change the colors over here to yellow, since that is the color of the light source coming off the right side of the screen there, um, making his orange a little more yellow. And I'm going to set this layer style to normal, and I'm just going to fade that yellow in um, from there. This is a great way to add a little extra depth to the piece itself by really focusing on these light source and making it apparent where our light is coming from in the scene. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Keep chasing your dreams and until next time.